the subject which is going to be started today is electromagnetic theory. Now, electromagnetic theory forms one of the most important topic for gate perspective. Now, why I mean in gate perspective because first of all, out of 100, about 10 to 14 marks questions are asked in gate. Okay. Secondly, it is supposed to be what people perceive or student perceive. The toughest subject among the gate subjects. Toughest among the gate subjects. And thirdly, the problems or the questions that come in gate are one of the easiest in the entire gate. So we see that even though students perceive it to be one of the toughest papers and most difficult to understand, if we approach this subject quite systematically, focus on the very basic parts, focus on the numerical small and somewhat basic theory and concepts, it's mainly a conceptual paper, then scoring 10 to full 10 to 14 marks is not very difficult considering that the type of questions and the level of the questions are pretty easy. The questions are not tough and the questions are very easy. Okay, so if you can study this subject well, not very deeply I would say, but have your concepts clear, follow the sequence in which a particular problem is approached, solve a lot of numericals based on the basic formulas, some twist here and there and all those stuff. So, you will find that solving around 5 to 6 2 marks questions that come in gate, 1 or 2 marks question, will be really simple and you will be getting those beneficiary 10 to 14 marks, at times maybe 18 marks as well. Okay. So, as we begin, let us begin from the very basic, basic things. We will be beginning from some bit of basic mathematics and some plus 2 those electrostatic and all those stuff. Right. So first of all, first of all, what is a scalar magnet? What is a scalar boundary? Scalar quantity is what? It has got magnitude and no direction. What is a vector? It has got magnitude and as well as direction. Okay. This direction is very important when vectors are concerned. Let us take an example. Example of scalar, the first thing that comes to our mind is speed. Example of vector, velocity. What's the difference between the two? Speed is kilometers per hour. What is velocity? Same thing. Kilometers per hour. But in a direction. In a particular direction. Okay? Now. Let us come to the electrostatic point. In electrostatic point, we are aware of some of the terms, right? Like uh, electric field, denoted by E, then potential. Potential or voltage denoted by V. Potential or voltage denoted by V. Uh, then what we have? We have some factors called work done, charge, 
energy, and all those things. The most important are these things. Okay. So, what is V? V is nothing but work done by charge. Okay. So it would be given by work done is given in joules and it will be given in coulombs. So it's basically W by okay. Also uh, this is a very fractional kind of a formula. In terms of vector notation, see, it's basically work done under charge, right? The work done has a particular direction. Had we in plus two or maybe nine or ten, we have studied that uh, if there is a particular force, then if the displacement is in a particular direction, that gives the direction of the uh, in which the work is done, right? So that way work is also a vector. So technically we can write. So technically work done is equal to force into displacement. Now what is force? What is force? We have studied in class 2 that force is equal to force of attraction between two particles Q1 and Q2. Electrostatic force of attraction between two particles Q1 and Q2 is given by Q1, Q2, 4 pi epsilon naught by the distance between them. Okay. Now we know force by unit charge, that is force by unit charge, this entire thing gives my electric field. Therefore, force is nothing but Q into electric field. Force is nothing but charge multiplied by the electric field. Okay. So here we can substitute that one. Okay. Now we see here this dl is my displacement, and displacement is a vector. Okay. This is my vector. An electric field. Now, how does the concept of electric field apply? This is how our concept of electric field applies. Uh, you have a particular charge, right? Now, it is said that the charge radiates a kind of field, like the sun radiates the rays surrounding it in a three-dimensional thing. So, if you have a charge at the center, like this, let us have a charge here. Let it be positive charge. It radiates a kind a lines of force of attraction or repulsion depending upon the neighboring charge in a 3D kind of a form and is spread outwards in a 3D way. Okay. Since if the charge at the center is positive, these lines of force comes out. If the charge is negative, lines of forces come in. Okay? So, our electric field can either be positive or it can be negative, right? Depending on this charge, what is the, that is at the center, it can be either positive or negative. Since, depending upon the direction of the field, hence we can say electric field is a vector quantity, okay? It would be a dot product of the two vectors. So what would be my total work now? My total work W will be Q will be outside E dot dl. Okay. Now what will be my voltage? Voltage is nothing but W by Q, which will be equal to integration of E dot dl. This would be the voltage. This would be my potential. Okay. Yes, so far. 
these are very basic things you can expect one mark question from these kind of stuff and some of the stuff i am going to cover as well most stuff i am going to cover Now let us come to something called potential of a point charge. Okay. What do you mean potential of a point charge? This is my charge. I use a positive charge. Okay. Now this is my point charge. Now let us see how we get a potential of a point charge. We know V is equal to V is equal to depending upon the direction is minus E dot V. Yeah. Because we do work against the direction of if you are moving against the direction of the electric field, we are doing work, right? So V is equal to minus E here. E dot integration of E dot. Okay. Now let us substitute the value of E we have seen earlier. U is Q, 4 pi epsilon naught by R square. Okay. Now this Q has a particular direction since it's the vector. Sorry, this E has a particular direction since it's the vector. So that vector direction is A R C. Let this be my vector direction. Uh, say for the direction thing, I put a comfort here. Yeah. This is my unit unit vector. Now, to get uh, to get the potential, the movement has to be in the uh, in line with that of the force. So multiply by dl. In this case, the real is replaced by dr because we have used an R notation here. Okay, yeah. dr. So we replace it by dr. Dr. Now why dr again? Because see, if this be a point charge and this is my line of force, okay, to have any potential. The work has to be done along this line of force. Now, while calculating electric field, we have denoted this line as R. So, any unit vector line in this line is basically A R. Any unit vector that lies in this line is basically A R. Okay. So, consequently, ah, so if anything, any positive or negative charge happen to move across this line. Across this line, say any positive or negative charge which happens to me, then what will be done? And that movement has to be along this line of electric field. Hence, this dr has to be in line with this thing. So the unit vector is also here. 